On today's show, why Draymond Green has compared this team to the 2022 title squad. Steph Curry says the Warriors as we know them may be done. And a reporter says to Draymond, we're all worried about you. To which Draymond responds, huh? On today's Locked on Dubs. You are Locked on Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hi, how are you? Good <laughs> to see you. Charlie Walter with you, formerly at 95.7 of the game in San Francisco. Also KPIX, which is CBS News Bay Area. Covered the Golden State Warriors for both stations and was fortunate enough to see the championship run in 2021-2022. I'm your host. This is Locked On Warriors. Let's get fired up. NBA season is here everyone the warriors media day went down today and we're here to tell you about it on locked on warriors part of the locked on podcast network your team every day today's episode is brought to you by fanduel you can start the season with a big return on fanduel place your first five dollar bet you'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed to get started visit fanduel.com welcome in my co-host Matt Kolsky, formerly a 95-7 the game, did Warriors post game, now does some work for KNBR. On today's show, we're reacting to three of my favorite sound bites from today's media day at Chase Center. One, Draymond Green on why he believes this team will be much better than most think. There's a common denominator between good teams and something that the Warriors have. I'm here to tell you what that is. Steph Curry on the Warriors' evolution and why I compare it to a little Pokemon Blue. We'll talk about that. And of course, Draymond Green's rant today when a reporter said they were worried about him. Draymond, we're all worried about you. And Draymond went off, and it's good stuff, and you're going to hear from it right now on Locked on Warriors. Don't tell me you're not fired up, Kolsky. Good to see you, man. You too. I'm very fired up. We have real content, real legitimate content. What a time to be alive. I told you, hypothetical season is over. We got plenty of topics to get into later in the week. Could Andrew Wiggins be the team's second scoring option? It is sounding like a possibility, as Steve Kerr said. He wants Wiggins shooting six threes a game. Draymond Green told Kyle Anderson, he's a center now. You're a center now. I'm the captain now. Kaminga is okay with not being extended and much more. So be sure to like and subscribe to the page. And also join us on the go, wherever you get your audio podcasts for that content all week long. But let's start with Draymond's secret sauce. Put it on a good burger. Better than Ed's secret sauce. It's as simple as this, Kolsky. It's depth wins championships. We literally mocked this on a show like two weeks ago. You know, we said defense wins championships. Scoring wins championships. You know what doesn't win championships? Something that the Warriors have. Just a plethora of depth. And Draymond Green says, Kolsky, Chuck, you guys are kind of dumb. Championships are won six through ten. Championships aren't won one through five. We see great one through fives all the time, and everybody in the world is like, uh-oh, watch out for that team. Look at that starting five. How are you going to beat that team? And then you get in the season, and they lose in the first round, and you realize, like, ah, they ain't that good. When you Phoenix see the new additions, when I look at guys like DeAnthony, Kyle Anderson, um, Buddy, that's Nemanja Bielisa, Otto Porter. Those are guys that come in that you know. I know exactly what those – I can sit here and tell you right now exactly what those three guys are going to bring to this team. Last time we added guys like that, we did what we love to do. So, I like it. Soundbite season is back, man. I was talking about how the young guys, the only thing they need to do this year – is just do what they do and do it at a consistent level. You know, don't be all over the place. Don't have sporadic great games. And that's what Draymond loves about these vets coming in. He knows what they're going to get. You know, defense from Melton and Anderson, high IQ from Anderson, someone that can push the pace in Melton, and a sharpshooter in Buddy Heald. Your thoughts on what Draymond Green just told us? It's what I would expect him to say, and it's he's not wrong. I mean, the things he said are all true. Well, huh, okay. Let's 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 nitpick a little. The first thing and main thing that he said is not entirely true, right? 
championships are won six through ten once you have the one through five. Like the he almost said that as if any old one through five could win a title as long as six through ten is strong enough. And we all know that's not the case. Well, 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 in, in pure journalistic fashion, I cut out half the soundbite for time constraints. So he did say something along those lines in there. He said the best teams have one through five and they also have the six through ten. But I think he's implying based on, you know, connecting the dots is that the Warriors have the one through five and the six through ten and don't sleep on them. Yeah. And uh, look, I mean, I think I've basically said I agree with him. You know, if don't sleep on them means they're a threat to be a four or five or, or six seed and make someone's life hell in the playoffs, if not go to the, the finals, you know, I, I I still have a hard time. Look, I have high hopes for Kaminga. I have high hopes for Wiggins, relatively speaking, certainly relative to last year. I don't know if I can get high enough pardon the pun to predict the warriors to win no, a championship um i i do though think they're gonna i think they're the best version of this roster has a real shot at a legit playoff seed not a play in and once they're in I'm not going to be real comfortable betting against the team with Steph Curry and Draymond Green on it if everybody's healthy so I think he's fundamentally right. I think he's going to say it in a way that makes it sound like the odds of success, if success is measured in championships, the odds of success are higher in Draymond's mind than in most other people's minds. But again, that's what I would expect. And I'm glad they're at least in a place where he can say that and not sound like a total jackass, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the nice thing. I don't think he reasonably could have said that the last couple of years. No, the, the fact though, that he's comparing, you know, a, a B elite supporter and Porter had a great year. Don't get me wrong. Since then he hasn't done anything, but Porter for the Warriors was, I mean, Excellent. one of the unsung heroes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. B was good for his role too, but I do think that, you know, Melton Anderson and even healed for the most part, someone that can put up 15, on you know not a good team he's not putting up 15 on a good team at least he hasn't throughout his career but he can I, he can shoot with the true. best of them. you're you you are so hard on buddy heel chuck i i i'm stating I'm facts good. what I'm, I'm stating facts kolsky and that fact is he has never put up points on a good team his pacers team's not good his king's teams did not make the playoffs he's barely did not been put on up points team. on the sixers for how long was he on the sixers a couple months not I mean, long. And when they played him in that last game of the playoffs, like he went off. He is a microwave. I, I, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to come across as the, yeah. you know, hating on buddy. I mean, I think love buddy, buddy ball. That's right. I think buddy's going to be okay here. And, and like, is he going to average 15 a game on this roster? Maybe not, but on any given night, he could go off for 25 or 30. And that's a valuable thing to have on the bench. Um, Draymond is right. You will be hard pressed to find a six through 10 that stands up to what the Warriors can put out there. And certainly there's nobody that goes, you know, four through 12, three through 12, the way they do one through 12. There's nobody, there's nobody with a roster this deep in the whole league. And no, part I of mean... that is the young guys, but part of that is these savvy veteran signings that as Draymond says, are, are going to play a very important role. If this thing is going to go well. I, I find it fascinating that two players that could play huge roles this year, we have no idea entering camp, but Moses Moody and, and Gary Payton, we don't talk about either of those guys ever on this show. I mean, we've done, what, 20 shows together at this point. I think the name Gary Payton's maybe been brought up twice in just passing. You know, we've never spent more than 15 seconds on him. Ironically, Moody they're two of my favorite guys on the team. Yeah. <laughs> I they help you win. They're the glue, man. They're the glue. I, I love that kind of player. And, and I think they are both guys that weirdly, there's not too much to say about at this point. Because with Gary Payton, it's very simply, what does he look like physically? You know, I think even when he was on the floor last year, he did not look like the guy who can change a game with his athleticism. Um is he ever going to be that guy again? That remains to be seen. How much will he find minutes on a very crowded 
squad. All all that is up in the air. But as far as the player, we when Gary Payton's right, we know what that is, and it's great. Um, we just don't know if we can see it. And with Moody, we kind of don't know what it is. And as much as I were I coaching the Golden State Warriors. I feel like we would already know, and I would be planning on playing him significant minutes this year. It's hard for me to predict that from Steve Kerr, given what I've seen over the last two years. Very tough to predict. Um, Seymour Moody, free Moses Moody. That's free Moody. One the, that's one I should have worn my Moody. If you had told me this was going to come up, I, I have my like Mosey Moody, Moody Mosey shirt. Uh, Moses. Coming up on Locked On Warriors, Steph Curry. He gives his first soundbite of the Locked On Warriors preseason, talking about how they need to evolve. The Golden State Warriors, as we know them, are no more. Clay Thompson leaving means it's time for a new rendition. The band, as Draymond Green said in, in his soundbite. This is like when the when the drummer leaves. And you got to find a new drummer when the, you know, the, the, the side vocalist leaves and you got to bring someone else in. He didn't say side vocalist, did he? He said side vocalist. Oh. He, he said, he said the, the number two. <laughs> that feels like a shot. Coming up on Locked On Warriors. But first, let's tell you about FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, boop, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Live bets. You ever heard of them? Free money. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Was looking at the Super Bowl odds yesterday. The San Francisco 49ers have the second best odds right now at plus 650. Should you get in on the action? If you do, go to fanduel.com. So the Golden State Warriors this upcoming season no longer have Klay Thompson. That was a headline that was dominated in June. Has not honestly been talked about a lot since. Um you know, it's it's obviously a main talking point for the Dallas Mavericks, but I do think a little bit of the Warriors fan base has maybe not come to grips with it. Maybe it's going to take them to see, you know, Clay in a preseason game or in, in the first regular season game he comes to Chase Center in order to process. I don't know, but maybe it's just from my perspective. I haven't heard a ton on it in recent months. This makes me so sad because anybody who has spent any time listening to me talk about the Warriors historically knows how much I love Clay Thompson at every radio show. Clay Theist, right? Yes. I love the guy. He's he's absolutely been my favorite player of the last decade. I thought you said last show it was Draymond Green. They're both in there, man. I mean, and listen, you got the and you got the KD in the background. I don't give a damn about no damn Drake night. <laughs> I like KD, and I and I like to go to bat for anyone who I feel like is inappropriately embattled. But man, it, you know what? The, the difference between now we're psychoanalyzing me, but the difference between my love for Draymond and my love for Clay is like I love Draymond. In like a, I, I, I really get you and, and like, I, we'd probably kill each other, but like, I deeply understand who you are and what you're trying to do. And I respect it. And, and I love you as a basketball player. Clay Thompson to me is like the platonic ideal of humanity, you know? So it's like an unattainable greatness that I admire and love so it's different anyway i say all this to say it's going to feel weird to see him in another uniform but it's not going to feel weird to not see him in a warrior's uniform because there's been plenty of that Mm -hmm. there's been plenty of that since 2019 and quite frankly and again i hate to say this but really the clay we think of when we think of clay left the golden state warriors in toronto 
in the 2019 NBA Finals and never came back. I thought he had some good games in the 2022 run. Game He's, six against Memphis, he went off, right? He is still a great player. He is still someone I am rooting for. But not he, the same. I get it. He is not the same guy. And he never reached the level where he could be anything like that guy for more than a couple weeks at a time. And and look, may he continue to get closer to that guy as his career goes on. But it, it but like I say all this not to talk sh- crap about Clay, but just to easy say, now, easy now. We were close there, Kolsky. We were, but just to say do post production. Thank God. <laughs> I, I just want to make the point that if you're a if you're a real warrior fan that has been riding with this team the whole way, you know that losing Clay now is nothing like it was when you really lost him in 2019. You know, it cost you a title unquestionably. Let's not beat around the bush. You win that title if Clay is healthy, full stop. And then it cost you. I mean, one of the worst years in the organization's history, in part because Clay's not there, and who knows how much else. But losing him now, it felt like a breakup that both parties know is the right thing. And sure, it's sad, but ultimately, you'll, in the long run, look back at what you had fondly, and there's no ill will. It was just time. That was spoken like a, a true, that was a sonnet. Wow. That was great. I mean, um, I, I listen, I, my whole career in this business has run parallel to these guys. So professionally and to an extent, personally, like their careers and the art you owe of them, them, everything, you know, who would have, who I, would have been listening to 95, seven, the game in your show during the, the, the summer months had the Warriors been winning 12 games. They mean a lot to me. They really do. And and I think about it a lot. And I I really think the clay thing is less of a big deal than it almost than it should be, given who he is and what he meant to this franchise and, and the Bay Area. But I think because of the unfortunate circumstances surrounding the last five years of his career, that's how it ended up. Mm-hmm. Um I you know. That forces an evolution to an extent, but it's still Steph Curry, right? It's still all about Steph, and it has. Yeah. Been- so oh. I, I hear the word evolve, man, and Steph Curry said it a lot today, and I, I just think of Pokemon Blue. I don't know if that was in your wheelhouse or you were a little. Bro, I am so too old for Pokemon. Oh you are, yeah, you're yeah. This is like, this is exposing not just the generational gap between us, but the fact that there may be an entire generation between <laughs> us. <laughs> Well, the goal of the game, Kolsky, was to evolve, right? Uh, Professor yes. Oak would would okay. give you the, the the squirtle, you'd turn it into a war turtle, and then you had the chance when you were evolving to hit B. And my brother, for whatever reason, would always hit B. And I'm like, dude, just go, be a Blastoise. And he's like, no, I like the war turtle. I don't want to evolve. But then Team Rocket just started kicking his ass over and over. He had to get the Hydra gun. Next thing you know, he finally goes through and is a Blastoise in short. Steph Curry had something along those lines, I think, with his quote here. Uh, Segway. The good news is, is like I'm coming into this training camp with an open mind of you know how we're supposed to play. I know there's a warrior mentality of and culture of how we do things. There's a system that we ran for you know a decade plus that has worked. Doesn't necessarily mean that's how this team needs to play. We have to have a, you know kind of antennas up on and an openness to you know, accept what this team's strengths are, what our weaknesses are, and and kind of lean into those. I think we're in that position where we can be a relevant team early and give ourselves a chance to, to compete and then assess where we are. Assess where we are is something that we heard from Dunleavy and, and pretty much that, that's been my take of the offseason. Like they're waiting in the weeds and then they assess where they are and they pounce. They go after some big talent if it's available and they have the pieces to get it done. But what are your thoughts from here and Steph? My first thought is that anyone who thinks 
he's not in that room every time they make a significant decision is an idiot and is not listening very closely. Yeah, he said he was with Paul George. He said he gave his input. Not, not the just decision that, maker, but, but like everyone's on the same page here. They're using the same catchphrases. They're they're giving the same company line. Steph Curry is the company. That's he's what company I think man. sometimes people don't realize. It's not that he's a company man. He's the company. Like, yeah, Joe Lacob and Peter Gruber's names are on the paperwork. But, like, Steph Curry's the company. He, none of this happens without him. None of this matters without him. It's all about him. And he knows that. He's just gracious enough to not make it a thing all the time, like other people might uh, and do in the NBA. But he's every bit the franchise that any other player that just popped into your head when I said that is and was full stop. And he is on board with what is happening here. And that will include potentially mortgaging some of the future to get better. If they think they can really compete. Um, that's what that says to me. Other than that. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's a, you know, Steve Kerr is a fascinating head coach. And, and to me, I, it's always trying to sort out the Phil Jackson from the Greg Popovich. There's a, there's a Phil Jackson thing going on here from a motivational standpoint. Right. And I think you can almost see, Steve and now Steph to an extent using different tactics towards different parts of the roster. Like, and Draymond's in on this too, by the way, just the, the way they talk about Andrew Wiggins, right? The way they talk about Jonathan Kaminga. Now look, Draymond, Draymond talks him up, but it always comes with the, if this, he's got to do this. We're waiting on JK to XYZ, right? The way they talk about Wiggins is like, oh, you should see this guy. <laughs> he's unstoppable. What? Oh, he's in the best shape of his life. Andrew Wiggins, you kidding me? 20 points a game, no problem, right? Like they just, they do the stuff they say publicly about the team as a whole and about the players that they are depending on to do certain things. It's all very calculated and not in a sinister way but just in a we know what needs to happen here and and if this thing is going to work without changes it's going to involve guys playing better than they have and that's why the punch was was so incredible around these parts because it was so off script right well D draymond's off script all the time but he's usually like at least in the same show right like maybe it's a curb your enthusiasm, you know, there's not a script per se for Draymond, but he's usually on the same page. And, and that has been the problem in general, the last two years with him. It's not just the punch. The punch to me is emblematic of a, of a Draymond who, whatever that little thing was that kept him on one side, or at least within striking distance of the line he like lost his radar of where the lion was on the court at practice. And for somebody who lives on the line, that is a very dangerous problem. Now, Steve Kerr seems to think he's got it sorted out. I gather we've heard from Draymond on the issue and we'll get to that sound in a minute, but I hope he's figured it out. I have no reason to believe he hasn't, but, but that to me, you know, Similar things happen to other guys, but I don't know that Rashid Wallace ever lost sight of the line at any point in his career the way Draymond did the last two years. A Rashid Wallace reference on today's Locked On War. Another one of my favorite players of all time. It's great, man. I have a type, all right? I won't deny it. Yeah. Tough guy. Tough guy, Kolsky. Not just that, but all around basketball players with an edge that's that's yeah that's my guy all right well we're gonna hear from that draymond green rant a reporter asked him uh you know hey we're worried about you draymond he, he stated it we're worried about you draymond went off it is great you know stuff. who it was 
We kind of buried the lead. I don't know. I don't care. All I care about is this soundbite coming up from Draymond. An all-time ran on Locked on Warriors. And we appreciate you all for making Locked on Warriors your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked on NBA podcast. The offseason is over in the NBA, and Locked on NBA will provide you daily basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked on NBA. It's available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team. Every day. Draymond Green, man. And the funny thing is, is we were talking, I think it's two episodes ago, I asked you if you had a credential to this year's media day, what would you be asking Draymond Green? And in the most journalistic, just a, a good way to ask the question, you framed it correctly. This reporter did not frame it correctly. Uh, basically just said, you know, here's how you should ask it, this question. Hey, Draymond, you, you missed the quarter of the season last year. It hurt the team. What measures have you taken to make sure it won't happen again? That's your goal as a journalist, to get out the question. When you ramble for a few seconds and don't even get out a question, that's when you're not doing your job well. Take a listen to this. You know people worry about you. Fans, maybe your teammates. Why do they worry about me? I am a successful black man in America doing incredibly well. (laughs) What's the worry about They worry about you. If you would have told me when I was 13 years old in Saginaw, Michigan, without a pot to piss in, that you'd be sitting here and somebody would say they're worried about you. I would have probably told them they were out of their mind if they, I'd be sitting here and they'd be worried about me. Well, they're worried for themselves, too. They, they want to know. They don't feed They know the team needs you. So why you are they worried? Because they know the team needs you. But they don't feed and them. And they don't fam- know if you're going to be here. doing this. I'm here. I've been here for 13 years now. If you're going to be here every night. Been here pretty much all, every night for 13 years. I think my mindset has helped us do some great things. It's pretty cool. So, it's all about how you spin it. I love how you try and spin it, but it ain't my spin to it, player. So, yeah, it's good. Hey, for anyone that's trying to get into sports broadcasting, I know I'm podcasting in a basement right now, but <laughs> it's, it's as simple as this, Kolsky. You make a statement, you ask a question that is directly from that statement. Steph, you had 25 threes today. How did you feel nailing all those three? You know, statement, question. This guy didn't get, the, he didn't get a chance to have a question because he started the, uh, the, the question with that. I don't know if it was a statement, a, a, an assumption. We're worried about you. What, what did you take of that? I'm going to use the word bizarre, just a bizarre exchange at media day. <sighs> I think this is why Nikola Jokic hates this stuff, right? Um, Draymond's so good as a talker that you just got to be better than that if you if you want to have an actual interaction and like re- a reasonable co- you can't he never got out of question did he like Not... i still don't know. i know what he was trying to ask look everybody including draymond knows what he was trying to ask but draymond's not going to give you a break when you try to answer that ask that question right if somebody had asked him the question like you just kind of introduced it or you know carefully and reasonably and directly, maybe you would have gotten something. I'm not sure even then you would have, because again, he's good enough as a talker. He doesn't have to answer any question. He doesn't want to. He'll give you something that sounds like an answer, but is actually nothing. Um, he's talked about this plenty. Uh, I don't know. I do think someone has to try to ask that, right? And whoever that was, uh, you know, took one for the team, but like, I guess stepped, like stuck his head over the plate instead of his ass. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know why he chose to do that, but yeah, you're not going to get much from Draymond that he hasn't already said on his own podcast, which is basically like, I've done some soul searching. I've talked to some professionals. I feel like I'm in a better place and in pretty complete control and I'm not concerned about it. And for what it's worth, none of his team the coach Steph Curry don't seem worried about it right now. Obviously that will change if there's an incident, but he ha- he's again, 
<laughs> he's obviously being a little misleading because he missed a very important part of the season last year. However, he's not wrong that he's been here for 13 years and on the floor about as much as anybody. So <laughs> I he is who he is. He's not going to change too much. That's for sure. Does the Warriors like worst case scenario this season involve Draymond doing something dumb, something selfish on the floor that puts the Warriors in like a, a really tough spot because he has even more so than Wiggins, like one of the, the, the toughest contracts to, to trade out at his age. And you really don't know what Draymond the player would be if you put him on a team like the, the Pistons, you know? He just meshes so well with Steph Curry. Got to go all the way back to playing for Tom Izzo since we've seen Draymond playing with anyone else other than Steph and, and, you know, Team USA. But, you know, is there any point where it could get so bad? And I've asked you this, and you said maybe. Is there any point where it could get so bad where the Warriors would be in that tough situation of like, what what are we going to do with Draymond moving forward? Yeah, I don't see it happening. I, you know, as in you think he's behaving? We are, yeah, we're discussing this because we're talking about the Warriors and it has to be discussed. I have ultimate faith in Draymond. I always have and I always will. That's how I personally feel about it. I, I have I mean, to look believe. at the look at the last two and a half years, though, Kolsky. We only talk about the punch and the suspension, but there was the the Sacktown stomp with. Uh, although that you know depends on who you ask, whether it was his fault or Sabonis's fault, but uh -huh. the, the issues are constant, right? Well, you know, I think this is one of those. But we could do a whole separate podcast on this, and maybe we should. But I think part of what happens with a guy like Draymond just like Rashid Wallace before him, is that once you're Draymond or Rashid, then you do start to kind of get weirdly persecuted. Now, that's it's weird to say because there's also a way in which because he's Draymond, he gets away with more nonsense than most people could in terms of yelling at the refs and stuff like that, right? But ever since the playoffs where he ultimately got suspended in the finals and there were the nut kicking incidents and all that stuff. He has carried this, you know, he kicks people. He does this. He's do when really I would argue that what he does, which is the same thing he's done virtually every night since his career began at Michigan state and probably before that, but I can only remember the beginning of Michigan state when a pudgy kid with a t-shirt under his Jersey became my favorite basketball player as a freshman at Michigan state. He, he, he plays with an edge and he flails. And sometimes I don't even know if flops is the right word, but his body is all over and he kicks his legs out. Yeah. He, he so, gets ragged off. Yeah. He does it. It's part of his game. He's always done it. When it connects with someone's testicles and or face, it looks bad. But, and I think he would be the first one to tell you this, and again, in fact, has. He's doing it all the time, and he doesn't really change that much. Now, obviously, the punch is not part of that. That's a different thing. I think the level it reached with Gobert and Nurkic last year goes beyond the normal Draymond antics as part of what he does on a basketball floor. And I even hesitate to use the word antics because I think it's perfectly legitimate stuff for the most part. It can't be out of control, which it felt like it was the last two years. And maybe even a level beyond that. It can't be whatsoever perceivable as out of control by the outside forces, right? Yeah. He can yeah. say all he wants. My teammates know me. Uh, you know, I know who I am as a man. And he's right about, you know, being a successful dude and not no one, certainly that guy who failed to ask a question doesn't need to worry about him. But yeah. he also, if he wants to be a serious part of a serious basketball team, He's got to make sure even people like that dude aren't perceiving him as out of control because that's 
that is the treatment he's earned with his last two seasons of behavior. Yep. Uh, lastly on the show, best wishes sent to the uh, Matumbo family, the Kimbe oh, Matumbo. 58 years of age, passes away on Monday, seven foot two, one of the greatest shot blockers in history, the finger wag. Uh, Dikembe Mutombo, known as one of the, the nicest guys in the NBA and just a, um, you know, 58 years old, man. Life is short. So, Kolsky, appreciate you hopping on today. Locked on Warriors. Season's here, folks. Free and available wherever you get your audio podcast. Peace, everyone.